Today we're going to talk about doing a knee needle diagnostic arthroscope in the office. And when we're talking about getting this set up, we're really trying to think about you know, where the patient problem is, uh, i.e. is there pain more medial and lateral. For the purpose of this demonstration, this is a right knee, so here we're going to be talking about uh, the lateral side, here we'll talk about the medial side. When I'm looking at my patient in the office, I want to get them comfortable. So the two most common ways we position the patients are either with the leg off the end of the bed, flex to a 90 degree position, or if they want to lie down for any reason, we'll actually lay them down to 45 degrees with a gel bump or a sterile bump underneath the knee. For the demonstration purposes today, we'll talk about the knee and the 90 degree position. So when I'm setting the patient up, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll more or less just take a marking pen and mark out my bony landmarks. So I'll just mark out the inferior portion of my patella and that gives me a good sense of where we're at here. Then I'm gonna go ahead and identify my patella tendon on either side and I'll mark this out just like in real arthroscopy. So that way I know where I'm at at all times. I can palpate my sort of tibial plateau here and again mark out where my menisci might be. Unlike surgical arthroscopy in, in the OR, this is a zero degree scope so I want to make sure that I'm reflective of this when I'm doing my, my needle arthroscope. So what I'll typically do is I'll come in at the level of the inferior portion of the patella on either the medial or lateral side, about a half centimeter to a centimeter on either side of it. This will sort of help me avoid the fat pad. So when I have my patient marked out, what I'll do is I'll prep them sterilely, and then I'll go ahead and I'll inject the skin wheel with about 1%, uh, I'm sorry, 1 cc of 1% lidocaine on either side. This will allow me just to anesthetize the skin without inflating the fat pad. In order to get some more uh, anesthetic into the knee joint, what I'll do then is I'll actually extend the leg and I'll go super patella on the lateral side. I'll inject the skin wheel as well in case I need to go through that port and then I'll inject the remaining five to six cc's of 1% lidocaine into the joint through the super patella portal. For the purposes of this, we've uh, already anesthetized our patient. And what I'll do is I'll start by aiming from the lateral portal. Just like in surgery, it's good to have sort of a, a routine that you go through, that way you don't miss anything. So for the purposes of this, I'm gonna start lateral and I'll enter into the joint. What I'll typically do is, this is a 14 gauge needle, is I'll actually hold my uh, my needle with a little bit of my finger choke up on it and I'll aim and I'll aim right for the intercondylar notch as I push in. Aiming for the notch is reproducible and also helps prevent iatrogenic cartilage injuries. Once I'm in I'll go ahead and I'll retract and again that'll sort of let me get around most of that fat pad and bring me right to the ACL. From here I can go ahead and squeeze through and get over to my medial side if needed. If so here we're into the medial side without much effort. Now, if you were entering the joint, and say you came back here and you were stuck inside the fat pad, okay, one of the things you can do is you can actually close your needle port up again. So you'll push your gray handle forward to retract the optics inside the 14 gauge needle. And you can again redirect for that notch and push through. It's important in, in my mind to really touch the patient, touch the skin, so that way you have that tactile feel for where you're directing. Once you direct into that intercondylar notch, you can again retract back your optics and again, work to get towards that medial portal. You know, one of the tendencies is when we're in a fat pad is to try and blow some of the synovial tissue off the end of our optics. But you run the risk of overinflating that fat pad. So I say the first time if you have some soft tissue stuck, retract and redirect best you can to get into that sort of notch or the medial compartment. If you still have a noticeable piece of tissue on the end of your scope, then close the uh, optics back inside the, the port and then flush a little bit. But you don't want to go filling the knee with fluid because that will overextend or over distend your fat pad. Once I'm inside the, um, the knee joint from the medial side, I can start my evaluation in the diagnostic manner of the medial meniscus. So here we're looking and we're seeing the mid body of the horn. Up top here we can see our femoral condyle and then below we see our tibial plateau. So what I'll do is I'll give a little flush once I'm here to sort of clear up the clarity, get rid of any sort of synovial tissue and then I'll work to evaluate my cartilage on both sides. So when I want to get to the posterior horn, it's important to sort of drive right to the sort of the little black triangle or the space that's there, and then I can start sweeping around to see my horn. Just like in real arthroscopy and EOR, movement of the knee and gentle movements from flexion to extension will create more visualization. So here by extending the knee, I can attempt to get underneath that femoral condyle. So here we're back and I have a little bit of synovial fluid in my way. I can blow that out of my way with a little flush. And again, I can start extending back and see my posterior horn. 
So when we're getting around to the posterior horn of the medial meniscus, I'll extend the leg out to help sweep underneath. And you can do this for yourself or with an assistant, but you want to be able to see it. And if you get a little bit of that cartilage in your face or a synovium, you can give a little gentle flush. And that'll one, make the meniscus flutter a little bit so you can see, and, and two, get the sort of uh, the cartilage out of your face if there's some degenerative changes on it. And that really lets you sort of do a good evaluation of this. Then as you're backing out, I'll take this back from you now, I can evaluate the leg from extension down to flexion here. Again, to look at the cartilage. There I'll see a chondral defect and I'll be able to look around. Then I can sort of sneak just above the meniscus into that medial gutter and again flex and extend the leg and look to make sure that there's no signs of a loose body back there because sometimes they like to hide back there in those recesses. So hyperextensions or hyperflexion will do that for you sometimes. And right there, see right in that posterior gutter and there's no signs of a loose body there which is great. From here what I'll do is I'll swing back a little bit, let the leg go back to neutral or 90 degrees of flexion, look at my cartilage one more time, then I can adjust my hand to swing up towards my ACL. Now here's where you want to be a little careful because that fat pad lies right there. So here without using much fluid at all, I'm able to see my fibers in my ACL really well there. I can give a little flush if I want to sort of make it flutter, but again I'm looking at my fibers of my PCL coming down as well as my ACL. So here's my ACL coming right there into focus. And again, if you want to get a different perspective on this, because it's a zero degree scope, you can switch to the medial side and watch the fibers run up and attach onto the femoral condyle. Continuing on from the lateral portal, I'll then gently just move my hand towards the midline. And now I've entered into the lateral compartment without much maneuvering at all on the leg. Again, just like in surgical arthroscopy, if you put the leg into a bit of a varus sort of thrust, it'll help it gap the knee open a little bit. And again, I can have my assistant reach in there and hold that if they want. And I'll just give a little flush to clear my view. But again, I'm looking at the posterior horn of that meniscus right there from the root, coming around towards my mid-body. And I can see there's a loose body floating in my field. And again, I can get in and look at my meniscus there in a pretty good way. And then look at the femoral, con chyl uh, sorry, femoral condyle cartilage and my tibia plateau cartilage. Again, when I'm done, I can swing out laterally there. And again, there's my sort of arthritic changes on my tibial plateau and my degenerative tear of my lateral meniscus. I'll just drop my hand back down to neutral and I'll be able to get into that lateral gutter by retracting back a little bit with my hand and pulling out. I'm going to take the leg from you there. And again, there's some synovium in my lateral gutter there, but it allows me to get up into that gutter in view. Now if I drop my hand and swing up towards the patella, I'm able to get into that patellofemoral joint area. So again, being careful not to overinflate that fat pad will keep it out of my way and I can extend my leg out as I'm dropping my hand down towards the floor. This allows me to view my trochlea as well as my patella and I can sort of push in a little bit here to get that view, giving a little flush along the way to see. There's my patella uh, in the superior portion of the picture and I swing down here and there's a little bit of a cartilage change on my trochlea. What happens if you're struggling and you can't get past the fat pad, which happens to all of us if you have a larger patient or maybe you just overinflated the fat pad initially with, the, uh, with your initial injection? Well, one of the things I've learned through trial and error is you can enter through the superior lateral portal and that'll sort of let you get, one, your bearings for your patellofemoral joint, but two, it'll let you sort of come across with an 18 gauge spinal needle. And what we can do there is we can come through the medial portal and sort of see a, a way to get into the joint with, while avoiding the fat pad. It gives me a, di a direction and a trajectory so that way I can keep that spinal needle in place and then withdraw my instruments from that superior lateral portal and come around. So what we'll do here is I'll have my patient's leg out straight and again you can do this with them lying down or you can do this with your assistant helping you and I'll enter that superior lateral portal. Once I sort of push through that sort of synovium and a fat pad I'll draw my optics and again, I can sort of see here my patellofemoral joint. So there's my patella. And again, I'm looking there down at my trochlea. So I sort of established I know where I am now. And I can get my sort of patellofemoral bearings and sort of, you know, reset myself. I know that there is a plica band and a synovial tissue band right there. So what I can do is I can extend my leg fully to help get underneath that. So I'm going to drive right underneath my plica band and my fat pad down into my medial side. And then what I can do is I can go through my previously anesthetized medial skin wheel with an 18 gauge spinal needle. And we keep these in the office. If you have just a regular needle, that's fine too.
But again, I previously marked out a good starting point on my skin about um, the level of the inferior pole of the patella, and again, coming across uh, at about five to eight millimeters medial to my patella tendon. And once I do this, I can sort of enter in and let my leg drop back down now. So we can extend it down. What that's gonna do is I'm gonna be able to get into my joint, coming across, and I can sort of see that area where I can come right in here. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll put my spinal needle in, and again, it's right at the level of the inferior pole of the patella, about five to eight millimeters over from um, my patella tendon, and I can sort of push the spinal needle in here. And now I know I've got a trajectory that I can get in without hitting my fat pad. So I'll sort of leave that in place, and I'll go ahead and I'll withdraw my, my eye. I've let my leg sort of rest at this point, and bring it down. And then what I'll do is I'll find that same trajectory when coming in here, and I'll just sort of mimic it, just like we do in real surgery. And I'll pull this in and aim right for that intercondylar notch. And again, once I do, I'll sort of feel it pop through. I'll withdraw my optics, and here I went right to the notch, into my lateral compartment. I was able to avoid that fat pad, and I can see this right away. Same thing applies if you had to, you can go superior medial, and again, get in through the lateral side if that's more comfortable for you. But it's just all about sort of triangulating and finding a way to avoid that fat pad. Again, the key to this in the beginning is avoid putting too much fluid into the knee joint, but if you have to sort of cheat, I would go super patella, and I would just look to find a way to get into that medial or lateral portal without any sort of soft tissue impediment. And then from there, you can continue your diagnostic evaluation. Pulling back and looking at your ACL fibers there on the femoral wall. Again, you, full, you fall back through the fat pad, I would say retract your optics push straight back in in a, in a manner to where you feel a, a push through or a pop. Now I'm back inside the joint. I can get rid of a little synovial by just blowing that off the end of my scope with a flush, no more than one to two cc's. Pulling back again to sort of evaluate my ACL fibers. And then I can swing over and into my medial compartment from this position, getting right into my medial side. And again, once I'm here, this makes all the difference in the world. This allows me to sort of see my posterior wall and my medial meniscus. I can then extend the leg if I want to sort of look at that a little bit better or dynamically. And I can swing around further to look at my mid-body as needed. From here, again, I can withdraw back, extend my leg, and go super patella one more time. Looking again at my condyle cartilage and pushing up with the leg in extension. into my patellofemoral joint. And again, there's my patella right above me, my trochlea there. And I can see my leg sort of extend and flex and see my good articulation there of my patella on my trochlea to see how it's tracking. So again, just one more way to get into the joint if the fat pad's holding you up.